I just know that that was a you know what I'm saying? That was a spiritual whether people know it or not, because God don't Oh, Jay-Z. And he was working with R. Kelly, and they were making so many records together. You know, they made all of those records together. They both fucked Aaliyah. They shared so much in common. Sean Carter is worse. Uh oh. Oh, man. He's smarter. He's patient. He's not sloppy. Mary J. Blige appears to have stepped forward, shedding light on alleged secrets that Jay-Z and Diddy have harbored since their entry into the industry, which involves the alleged sacrificing of women. So, what exactly did she say? Mary J. Blige did an interview where she referred to Aaliyah's death as a spiritual M and said it wasn't supposed to go down like that. That was a murder. You know what I'm saying? That was a spiritual murder, whether people know it or not, because God don't kill people. You know what I'm saying? Whether people know it or not. And um, I could go deep, but... A lot of people I would have to really bring. But that wasn't the only time Mary openly speculated about Aliyah's death. In a 2006 conversation with Oprah, Mary J. Blige revealed the depth of her emotional response to Aliyah's death. She reflected, yes, and Aliyah had just died. My life was her life. She was surrounded by people who weren't telling her the real deal. We weren't close friends, but I talked with her a couple of times. I very well could have been the woman on that plane. Mary's connection with Aliyah, despite not being intimate friends, underscored the vulnerability and interconnectedness of their lives. She spoke of the pervasive influence of those around Aaliyah, hinting at an environment where honesty was lacking. Mary's introspection led her to a chilling realization. I don't know how or when, but I'm next. She also talked about how during a performance at the historic Apollo Theater in Harlem, Mary experienced a moment of reckoning. Overhearing her boyfriend Kendu's ultimatum about leaving her if she returned home drunk, Mary decided to alter the course of her life. Recounting the pivotal night, she shared, After the show, I received a call from the girl who always got the drinks and substances. When I went to her house, she had the biggest bottle of wine she could find on the table. I took off all my makeup and just sat there. You want a glass of wine? She asked. I said no. I got up and left for home at 10 o'clock that night. Normally, I'd be stepping in the house at 4 in the morning. Shockingly, this was the same night she received the news of Aliyah's passing. In a separate interview, Mary elaborated on the profound shift triggered by Aliyah's death, stating, she wasn't a close friend. It was just that when I saw her die, that's when I discovered the fact that I'm next. Mary expressed her deep-seated fear, saying, I don't know what kind of freak accident they're going to put me in, or what kind of overdose of heroin they're going to sort out. But at the end of the day, I knew I was next. I just thought, I'm scared. All this information was released a while back, but with the recent investigations on Diddy, a lot of these covered-up cases are being unearthed. For example, members of the public have uncovered new details about an individual who has been suggested to have connections between Diddy and Jay-Z. This person is Kathy White. Now, in case you're unfamiliar, Kathy White, also known as Corey or Coriana, was a model and fitness expert who also managed her own PR firm, White Label PR. She was frequently seen around many celebrities and was actually close friends with quite a few of them, including Claudia Jordan and Jason Lee. In fact, Claudia Jordan, who has been labeled as a notorious home wrecker, used to accompany Kathy White in relationships with married men. And when I say married men, I mean extremely wealthy married men. Kathy herself is known to have admitted that she's here for a good time, not a long time. Unless a man has a net worth of at least 50 million, she won't pay him any attention. So you can see how Jay-Z must have been the perfect match for her, even though they supposedly started dating long before he and Beyonce tied the knot. Rumors about the alleged affair between Jay-Z and Kathy sparked after Kathy and her BFF, Claudia White, were spotted at a Las Vegas nightclub partying with Jay-Z and Diddy. In fact, Jay-Z allegedly bought Kathy a $25,000 pair of Louis Vuitton shoes to wear that evening. Sources also reported that Jay was very particular about keeping the relationship low-key, so he would do things like ask her to bring a couple of friends along for a ride so it wouldn't look like they were a thing, which is what he did that evening while they were in Vegas. Jay also reportedly took Kathy on a trip to the Bellagio Casino, asking her to bring a few friends to their table. It looks like Jay was really taking care of Kathy, so much so that her friend Claudia Jordan was reportedly jealous of how Kathy always seemed to pull all the wealthier ballers, and how she had over $100,000 worth of bags and $200,000 worth of shoes, and how she could just randomly buy her friend a $3,000 Louis Vuitton bag. So Jay was definitely doing right by Kathy, well, until he started seeing her as a liability. And that's why it's interesting that in 2020, a blind item from Crazy Days and Nights said this, A-list host model is also an actress. 
Our host has always stayed quiet about the death of her friend, but has become more convinced over the years that the permanent A-list rapper had her friend unalived. It just seemed too convenient that he wanted her out of the picture, and shortly after, she said that the friend ended up dead. It was then revealed that the A-list host was Claudia Jordan, Kathy's friend, and the rapper was Jay-Z. Well, as the saying goes, all that happens in the dark will eventually come to light. It didn't take long for people to start putting two and two together and figuring out that Kathy was Jay's mistress. Naturally, they started reaching out to her for comments on the situation, and about two weeks before she passed away, a major tabloid that was investigating the Jay-Z connection allegedly reached out to her. Kathy stood her ground, vehemently denying any whispers about her having an affair with Jay-Z. For many netizens, this wasn't really surprising. To them, Jay-Z seemed dead set on keeping everything under wraps. As far as they were concerned, he probably made it crystal clear to her that if she breathed a word about their fling, it would be game over. But something must have shifted for Kathy. Maybe she got tired of living a lie, or perhaps she believed Jay-Z wouldn't dare leave her hanging with a baby on the way. Either way, she finally decided enough was enough, and it was time to spill the beans. Word on the street is she even reached out to Jay-Z, giving him a heads up that she was about to go public with their affair. For a price, of course. But here's where things get sketchy. Reports are swirling that the first responders to the scene of Kathy's death felt like something just wasn't right. It's like they sensed there was more to her passing than met the eye. Also, at the time the news of Kathy passing away from a brain aneurysm got out, it was still too early to know for sure that's what really happened. Besides, Kathy was young, fit, and healthy before she passed on, so for her to randomly drop dead from a brain aneurysm was just highly unlikely. A detective from the NYPD had this to say about her death. A 911 call from an apartment on 30 West 19th Street in Manhattan. An ambulance came and took Kathy because she was sick. They took her to the Beth Israel Hospital and that's where she expired. It's too early to be speculating that an aneurysm offed her. They will be doing an autopsy later today to check out her cause of death. But someone might have given Kathy a bad drug, so they'll do a toxicology report, and we'll have to wait two weeks for that report. It's pretty unbelievable that even though all the detectives and cops involved in Kathy's case thought the circumstances were suspicious, her official cause of death was said to be a brain aneurysm. This makes you wonder if someone was behind the scenes trying to hide the truth. And that leads us to Jay-Z. Let's look at the timeline. Kathy died in early September 2011, right around the time Beyonce announced she was pregnant with her and Jay-Z's first child, Blue Ivy. The timing is really interesting, especially considering all the conspiracy theories suggesting Beyonce might have used a surrogate instead of carrying the baby herself. During this time, fans started speculating that Jay-Z might have been involved in Kathy's death to stop her from sharing stories with the media that could damage his marriage to Beyonce. One blog even suggested that Kathy's death brought unwanted attention to Jay-Z, with rumors going from the idea of a secret child in Trinidad and Tobago to claims by Illuminati believers that her death was a sacrifice for the power couple. Adding another layer to the intrigue is the person who reignited interest in Kathy's case, Liz Crokin. Liz penned an in-depth report delving into the circumstances surrounding Kathy's death, fueling suspicions that Jay-Z played a role. According to Liz's account, she reached out to Kathy for an interview about Jay-Z, initially met with denial from Kathy regarding any connection with the rapper. However, when presented with evidence of their interactions, including photos of Kathy with Jay-Z and Puffy, Kathy allegedly hinted at being willing to spill the beans about their affair. Yet soon after, communication with Kathy abruptly ceased, and when Liz finally managed to contact one of Kathy's friends, she received the devastating news of Kathy's passing. Some of Liz Crokin's recent tweets about the situation actually brought new attention to the case. In one tweet, Liz said, As I said in a tweet the other day to Jay-Z, I was the reporter who talked to your alleged mistress right before she was unalived. I know everything. I know what you did. So go F yourself, Jay-Z. There will be justice for Kathy White. In any case, it is no secret that Jay-Z has been using a hand signal that forms a triangle during his performances, which is believed to symbolize a diamond and has become closely associated with both Jay-Z and his record label. On occasion, Beyoncé has also been seen making this hand signal, likely as a gesture of support for her husband and his brand, but the triangle shape is somehow associated with the Eye of Providence. They said the Eye is connected to a wide range of belief systems, including the Freemasons and Illuminati. Thus, conspiracy theorists believe that Jay-Z's iconic hand signal is, secretly, signaling his devotion to the Illuminati. Also, you might have noticed, but there had already been suspicions about Beyoncé's seemingly on occultic side. Way back in 2018, Kimberly Thompson, Beyoncé's former drummer, had accused the singer for extreme witchcraft and magic spells of M. Seemingly, this was what she said. 
literally shattered everything that I've tried to build after doing that work uh, in my life. Um, so I'm, if, if I have always said when I was a kid, I, I never would want to regret anything. Not only that, she further claims that Beyonce has been casting spells to keep her under her control, as much as using some mind control tactics to keep her tied down completely. Kimberly Thompson's attempt to obtain a restraining order against Beyonce is a noteworthy development in the story. However, it's important to note that restraining orders are typically granted when there is concrete evidence to demonstrate a credible threat or potential harm. In this case, the judge's decision to deny the motion suggests that there was insufficient evidence to support the claim that Beyonce posed a threat to Kimberly Thompson. Legal actions such as restraining orders require a high standard of proof to be met before they are granted. As such, the court's decision indicates that there wasn't enough evidence to substantiate the allegations against Beyonce. On the other hand, Beyonce and Jay-Z are well aware of the increasingly bizarre theories that surround them. To get back to the haters, Beyonce directly addresses them in formation. Her lyrics stating, Y'all haters corny with that Illuminati mess. Still, some of Beyonce's fans choose to leave her side, giving the speculation that she might be related to the Illuminati, saying, There's just something about her that has never sat right with me. While I could easily say that a celeb was beautiful or that someone was gorgeous, I never felt that way about her. It's not just looks, but her aura demeanor always seem off somehow like she was hiding something. The allegations don't stop there for the couple. Foxy Brown, whose real name is Inga Marchand, has revealed that her rise to rap fame had a dark side, and it happened when she was young. There are whispers that she alleges Jay-Z, who was 27 at the time, took her V-card when she was only 15 years old. According to the story, Jay-Z, who supposedly has a horse-like you-know-what, financed her shopping sprees and treated her to hair and nail salon visits while she was still in high school, all to be intimate with her. In the beginning, we'd jump in the van, we'd go to Maryland, we'd go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? There are additional claims circulating suggesting that Jay-Z may have a preference for relationships with transgender individuals. According to these assertions, Foxy Brown mentioned that she became aware of this after an individual from that community began contacting and harassing her following her alleged involvement with Jay-Z, a situation that was further complicated by an alleged health concern. Think about what I'm going to say. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I think about what I'm going to do. Allegedly, a series of astonishing revelations has emerged from Foxy Brown, suggesting that Jay-Z's personal life is far from conventional. According to these claims, a particular session involving Jay-Z and Foxy Brown was purportedly recorded on video, and it was anything but private. The sensational twist in this story comes with the alleged presence of another high-profile figure, Jamie Foxx, known for his role as Wanda on the iconic sketch comedy show In Living Color. This was a, allegedly a romantical thing. It's, it's all right, I'll say alleged, but we know we know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, she hit it before Beyonce. Foxy Brown's narrative takes a darker turn when she purportedly discloses that Jay-Z compelled her to sign multiple non-disclosure agreements or gag orders linked to an intimate encounter involving all three of them, herself, Jamie Foxx, and Jay-Z. It's suggested that this encounter was, in fact, a threesome. But but you, but if you go be mad at R. Kelly, you got to be mad at Jay-Z. Foxy Brown said JD was, Jay-Z was putting that harsh on her when she was 15, 16. She said a man. The alleged videotape of this rendezvous mysteriously vanished from her home shortly after the incident. Foxy Brown strongly believes that Jay-Z may have played a role in the disappearance of this tape, casting doubt on his involvement in the alleged theft. Was I shocked when Jay said the line in Picasso Baby? Yes, because we've talked about that. We have a history that supersedes music, Foxy said on Rap Fix. I think he began to feel the pressure because people were saying my age, the age thing, 15, 14, and after a while that gets to a person. The Jay I know, the Sean I know never comes out of character. However, the story goes even further. Beyond these astounding claims, there are suggestions that Foxy Brown hinted at another intriguing facet of Jay-Z's life. She allegedly implied a deeper connection between Jay-Z and NBA player Larry Johnson, implying that their relationship might have been more than just casual friendship. The fact that Jay-Z once shared an apartment with Johnson, who had prior ties to Rokaware, lends some credibility to her insinuations. She said, The atrociousness of this story sickened me to my stomach. Any and everyone involved will be contacted by my attorney. In all my years in the music industry, these are the most disgusting and disrespectful allegations I've ever experienced. This fictitious story, with no audio, visual, or written interview, clearly, in her supposed candid recollection of her experiences with Jay-Z, Foxy Brown appeared to hold nothing back, particularly when it came to expressing her feelings about Beyonce. Her sentiments towards the global superstar were far from complimentary. Foxy 
Chelsea Brown left no room for ambiguity in her candid remarks about Beyonce. She allegedly claimed that Beyonce had also contracted an infection from Jay-Z, which, if true, would be deeply distressing. These allegations paint a picture of Foxy Brown as a victim on multiple fronts. She reportedly suffered not only from an infection, but also from a traumatic experience in her childhood. The mention of R. Kelly, who faced accusations of Child M, in connection with Jay-Z, underscores the gravity of the situation. If these allegations hold any truth, it appears that Jay-Z may have allegedly started grooming Foxy at an early age, adding a distressing layer to this complex narrative. As with any such claims, it's crucial to approach them with skepticism and await any verified evidence or statements from involved parties. This is normal behavior in the black culture. You remember, don't make me bring up Bentley. DMX getting his dick fuck in the car. What no, what no black people mad at that scene? You see, the connection between Jay-Z and Foxy Brown commenced with Foxy's involvement in LL Cool J's I Shot Ya, I Shot Ya remix when she was just around 14 or 15 years old. As Brown ventured further into the music world, she found herself collaborating with numerous prominent artists, but none were as noteworthy as her recurring collaborator and co-writer, Jay-Z. Their debut major duet, Ain't No N, was a track featured on the soundtrack for the film The Nutty Professor, released in 1996, although it had been recorded back in 1994. This track began with Jay-Z's self-assured lyrics, which opened with a provocative nod to Foxy Brown. Fox Brown, yeah Jay-Z, what? I keep it fresher than the next buy. No need for you to ever sweat the next bee. With speed, I make the best to see the exit, indeed. He continued, you gotta know you're thoroughly respected by me. You get the keys to the Lexus with no driver. You got your own 96 something to ride and keep you tied up in Versace, that's why. The chorus of the song unfolded into a mesmerizing duet between Foxy Brown and Jay-Z, igniting more curiosity about their relationship. Ain't no end like the one I got. No one can F you better. Sleeps around, but he gives me a lot. Keeps you in diamonds and leathers. Friends will tell me I should leave you alone. Tell the freaks to find a man of their own, man of their own, man of their own. The issue of Foxy Brown's age during the release of the song in 1996 remains contentious. Yet official records indicate that all pre-mixed recordings, including vocals, had been completed by 1994 when Brown was approximately 14 or 15 years old. Her debut album, Il Nana, was unleashed when she was just 17, and it featured no less than five co-writing credits with Jay-Z. One track on the album, Il Nana, bore a significant imprint of Jay-Z's influence, hinting at something deeper in their relationship. Things were getting a bit spicy, you might say. It's important to note that Method Man did not contribute to the lyrical content of these songs, yet it was clear that Jay-Z and his associates had a substantial hand in shaping the overtly S nature of this album. The lyrics and content of another track, I'll Be, featuring Jay-Z, were equally explicit, indicating a release date around 1997 with a reissue, while the vocals had been recorded between 1994 and 1996. How we do? Yeah. yeah. That said, the most intriguing aspect of their connection was the persistent rumor that Jay-Z and Foxy shared a concealed relationship during the 1990s. Although neither of them publicly addressed these allegations at the time, the undeniable truth is that Foxy and Jay shared an exceptionally close bond, both inside and outside the recording studio. While Foxy Brown was undoubtedly a remarkable performer who left audiences yearning for more, it is Jay-Z's repeated inclusion of her in his tours that raised eyebrows. And Fox also said once, in all my years in the music industry, these are the most disgusting and disrespectful allegations I've ever experienced. This fictitious story, with no audio, visual, or written interview, clearly was concocted with malicious intent. Many people were left wondering if their connection was merely a friendship, or if there was more to it than met the eye. Why did they maintain silence on the subject? Well, one fact that must be considered is Foxy Brown's age when she initially crossed paths with Jay-Z. It is alleged that she was just 15 years years old when they first encountered each other, whereas Jay-Z was 27 at that time. She said, Beyonce, his wife, has always been gracious and sweet to me. I will not let any undercover hater create discord and disrespect my name and reputation. This disrespect will not be tolerated. This is where things start to get rather peculiar. Foxy would later sign a contract with Def Jam, and only afterward did allegations surface suggesting a romantic liaison between her and Jay. Once again, Foxy vehemently denied these claims, insisting that her connection with Jay was rooted solely in their shared passion for music. Nevertheless, the circumstances surrounding a 
11-year-old man's friendship with a 15-year-old girl undoubtedly raise eyebrows. When it comes that day when we get a little, we get a little more intricate with it, we go for distribution and things like that. That's when I want to see. Their on-stage chemistry was hard to ignore, and Jay-Z often invited Foxy to perform with him during his tours. All of this transpired while Foxy was still a teenager. The situation began to draw comparisons to the Aaliyah and R. Kelly scandal of that era, where people couldn't help but feel that they were remarkably close. Always seen together, mingling in the same circles, partying together, it made folks speculate whether there was more to their relationship than they were letting on. In the 1990s, people began to draw parallels between Foxy Brown and Jay-Z and Lil Kim and Biggie, noting the undeniable chemistry they shared. In the case of Lil Kim and Biggie, the connection went beyond friendship into a romantic one. It was natural for people to wonder if Jay-Z and Foxy shared a similar bond. No one can, one, 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 yeah, yeah. Even the infamous Ether track by Nas seemed to imply that Jay-Z had a romantic relationship with Foxy, further fueling the speculation that their connection went beyond mere friendship. He rapped that this Gay-Z and Cockafella Records wanted beef, started cocking up my weapons, slowly loading up this ammo to explode it on a camel, and his soldiers, I can handle this for Dolo and its manuscript, just sounds stupid. Damon Dash was also recently interviewed by Nick Cannon, who asked him, at what age was Foxy Brown signed? And Cannon responded by saying, I wasn't paying attention to Foxy Brown. I didn't sign Foxy Brown. Stop putting me in that. Don't beat around the bush. Say what you want to say. What do you mean by that question? It seems like you got a question for Jay. Ask him. Well, when Cannon pressed him to give a clear answer, he exploded on the host. I just wanted to know. Hey, Kenyatta, I'm, I'm, Kenyatta. I'm, 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 I'm just asking. Why you bring that up? <laughs> what happened with Foxy Brown? I don't know. You, <laughs> what are you saying? I'm not but as things would turn out, Damon wasn't exactly successful at evading the question, and this basically proved that there was something going on between Foxy and Jay-Z. He said, I never stuck my C in the Fox's box, but damned if I ain't open Pandora's box, they try to slander your man on CNN and Fox. In any case, while it's crucial to emphasize that none of these allegations has been officially confirmed, there's an adage that suggests where there's smoke, there's likely fire. In this case, the air is thick with speculation, and fans can't help but detect the un unmistakable scent of something smoldering beneath the surface. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.